17 years ago, Nintendo upended expectations by launching a brand new console without a Mario game. At the time, it seemed kind of crazy. After all, Mario defined its two prior console launches, but there was something else awaiting early adopters instead. A brand new game starring Luigi. This is Luigi's Mansion, and it's a rather unusual game, combining Nintendo's charming character design and fun gameplay mechanics with a horror-themed mansion certainly isn't something anyone expected from Nintendo at the time, but since its release, the series has become somewhat of a fan favorite. And now Luigi's Mansion is reborn on Nintendo 3DS in one of the most interesting ports we've examined in quite some time. You see, this is the first major GameCube exclusive to appear on Nintendo 3DS, and the timing and circumstances around each release couldn't be more different. Thus, it's time to go back to the mansion. Luigi's Mansion made its first appearance all the way back in the year 2000 at Nintendo's Space World event. Here, the GameCube hardware was unveiled to the world along with a series of tech demos and videos designed to showcase their target for next generation visuals. Luigi's Mansion was part of this demonstration, and one year later, the game would launch alongside Nintendo's new GameCube. And as a launch title, Luigi's Mansion remains an interesting little game. In many ways, the visual stylings of modern Nintendo games can be traced back to this very moment. With an ample polygon budget and new rendering techniques at hand, Nintendo started down its path towards matching the renders of Mario and friends in real time. As such, in its original form on the GameCube, Luigi's Mansion still holds up surprisingly well. Now, I've long held the opinion that Nintendo GameCube is the finest piece of console engineering in Nintendo history, a perfect blend of powerful, efficient hardware packed in an elegant little case, and Luigi's Mansion does a great job of showcasing some of its new features right at launch. Now, the Nintendo 3DS follows in the footsteps of previous generation Nintendo handhelds. Traditionally, Nintendo's portable systems follow a generation or two behind their home consoles, often receiving the expected conversions. The Game Boy Advance, for instance, was home to a wide range of Super NES games, while the Nintendo DS launched with Super Mario 64, the Nintendo 64's premier launch title. The 3DS though, well we've received a handful of slightly downgraded Wii ports already, but Luigi's Mansion is the first time we've seen an actual GameCube title brought to life on Nintendo's handheld. And the timing of its release is equally interesting. Luigi's Mansion was a launch title for the GameCube, right? But it arrives on 3DS at the tail end of its life, well after developers had come to grips with the hardware. So, as the first GameCube to 3DS conversion released, what can you expect? Well, in bringing the game to 3DS, Nintendo employed the expertise of Grezzo, the studio responsible for Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask 3D, rather than Next Level Games, the studio responsible for Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon. First impressions are certainly positive. Whether you've played the original game or not, this conversion is beautiful right out of the gate. Compared to its sequel, there's a higher level of detail and nuance on display here. Character models, for instance, are smoothly rendered, texture work is all new and beautiful, and there's a lot of other great touches strewn about the environment, the way coins and money jump about the screen, the cloth physics which appear when using your vacuum, and things like the reflective mirrors. Lots of nice touches everywhere. The flashlight beam is also a juxtaposition of what seems to be a per pixel light drawn across the environment combined with a transparent cone and associated lens flare effect. Honestly, it's all very cohesive and it works extremely well in 3D. It has that diorama-like look to it. And playing the game in 3D makes a lot of sense since Nintendo said in an interview years ago that Luigi's Mansion was designed with stereoscopic 3D in mind. The GameCube is capable of it, but due to the lack of affordable display technology at the time, the feature was ultimately canned. But if you play it on a new 3DS, the effect is very convincing. It looks great. Honestly, at first glance, you may not even realize that the game's visuals have been completely revamped. That's right, Grezzo basically remade Luigi's Mansion, 
While it does share some elements with the original game, most of the art is entirely new, lending Luigi's Mansion a rather different look. So let's start at the beginning then and see how it stacks up against the GameCube version, shall we? But before we begin, I should note that the GameCube version was captured from real hardware using the official Nintendo component cables while running the game at 480p, and 3DS captures were done on a new 3DS capture kit via HDMI output. Okay then, the very first scene demonstrates a noticeable change in the mood of the game. The new 3DS version is presented as darker, more sinister in comparison to the GameCube. And once Luigi looks at his map here, this new atmosphere continues with a moodier looking mansion looming in the distance with improved lighting effects and higher resolution textures. The intro is also interesting on GameCube since it reveals that it's one of the rare titles for the system to completely forgo MIP maps so distant textures appear to shimmer more than you'd expect for the GameCube. Moving on, I feel there's just more nuance in the shading and lighting here on the 3DS. You do have to keep in mind the release time frame though. These visuals were cutting edge at time of release on the GameCube, and it was Nintendo's first foray into more modern style rendering. There was still a lot to learn. As Luigi cracks open the front door, however, I did note some advantages in favor of GameCube. There's a slightly increased level of geometric and texture detail here on the door. I also prefer the appearance of the flashlight cone shining into the camera, but again, that's more of an artistic change than anything else. But here's something. On GameCube, Luigi transitions immediately from the door opening animation right into the mansion. There are no loading screens and barely even a black screen. Keep in mind that GameCube was Nintendo's first optical disc based console and they were keen to make a strong first impression I'd imagine. Thus, the results here are quite impressive. On 3DS, however, there are loading screens now, though I'd imagine this is due to the small file size of the 3DS version. Data simply needs to be decompressed when loading between areas. Now, here's where the differences become even more evident. The texture work on 3DS appears more refined, but the lighting and shadows are handled completely differently. Look here, on GameCube as Luigi sweeps his flashlight across the scene, shadows are drawn. On 3DS, this doesn't happen. So what's going on? Well, after investigating it, it seems as if the shadows generated in Luigi's Mansion on the GameCube rely on the system's EFB, or Embedded Frame Buffer. I discussed the EFB in an episode of DF Retro on Water, but the gist is this. Games can render useful elements, like reflections or a heat wave effect or any other number of things, and then simply combine them with the main frame buffer before presenting the final image. Somehow the game renders out a secondary image of objects which can project shadows and utilizes this information to present what we see in game. The 3DS of course works in a rather different way and this trick wouldn't really make sense, so in this instance the developer has taken two approaches. The first involves casting dynamic shadows in a completely different way, while limiting the number of objects that can cast shadows to a very low number. The second seems to involve more static shadows, which almost appear to rely on something like vertex painting or another old school technique. I'm really not entirely certain here, but these shadows only appear when lightning flashes occur, and since the direction of the lighting is always known, the technique actually makes a lot of sense. So this is just something that's consistent throughout the game then. There are simply fewer shadows being drawn on 3DS. Another thing that stood out to me is this geometry popping in at exactly the same time on both versions of the game. I had kind of assumed initially that this was using Dark Moon's engine developed by Next Level Games, but I'm not so sure that's the case anymore. The game seems to look and run rather differently than Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon. And also Next Level Games is a Western developer, while Grezzo is based in Japan. It seems unlikely that they would have shared technology. But again, it's kind of hard to say for sure. Okay, so let's move on then. The next thing I wanted to look at are doorknobs, which is kind of a weird one. For some reason on GameCube, these sequences play back at 60 frames per second. Perhaps a nod to classic Resident Evil games? I'm not really sure. Either way, that's no longer the case on 3DS. They're now 30 FPS, which is no big deal really, but the more interesting change stems from the reduction in doorknob geometry itself. The rounded area on GameCube is now quite angular on 3DS. Furthermore, on GameCube, the developers display a reflection of Luigi's hand in the doorknob itself, which is now missing on 3DS. Now, once inside this room, we're treated to another cutscene. 
First thing, you may have noticed it already, but Luigi's model is taller and lankier in the new 3DS release. This is likely just a stylistic change to match the current version of Luigi. Then there's the ghosts themselves, which are rendered quite differently. On GameCube, the EFB is used here again. The ghost is rendered to a separate buffer from the main scene that is then overlaid back in. This approach allows the team to manipulate the way the ghost is rendered in the main scene, giving it a more transparent, spookier look. On 3DS, this is clearly handled in a different way, and thus the ghost appears slightly more opaque and less ethereal overall, I feel. This cutscene also highlights something else worth mentioning, and that's performance. For the most part, Luigi's Mansion targets 30 frames per second across both platforms, but the results aren't always perfect on 3DS. Using a new 3DS console first and foremost, certain cutscenes like this drop all the way to 20 FPS and stay there. There's even some inconsistencies along the frame time graph, which really isn't optimal, but thankfully, it's only something that occurs in scenes like this. The rest of the game holds very close to the 30 frames per second target, but that doesn't mean things are perfect. Take a look at the frame time graph over there on the left. You'll notice that there are some inconsistencies with the frame persistence on 3DS. It's not too severe, but it does add a little bit of extra judder to the overall experience. Which just happens to be true of the GameCube original as well. I also tested the game on a stock 2DS, which shares the same performance profile as the original 3DS console, and here performance is slightly less stable. I noticed additional drops during normal gameplay that aren't present on the new 3DS. Unfortunately, I don't really have a way to capture standard 3DS gameplay, so I couldn't easily measure it, but it's there. Okay, back to the cutscene then. Certain characters, such as Professor E. Gad here, seem to exhibit lower polygon counts on the 3DS compared to GameCube, and his hose also behaves slightly differently if you look closely. The next camera pan here across the scenery also highlights once again just how different the texture work truly is. I do think it's a general improvement overall, though later I noticed that the bump maps featured prominently on GameCube are not replicated on 3DS. From this point though, things start to differ. Professor Egad's lab and the gallery featured in the game are entirely different on 3DS, and in fact I would say they're more refined overall, both visually and function-wise. The 3DS version also introduces the option to play in co-op using Gooigi, which of course is not available on GameCube. Unfortunately, I don't own two copies of the game, so I couldn't play proper co-op, but you can use download play to join a friend in a different mode. I wasn't able to capture this, however, and I have to say, the launch trailer for the game is a pretty accurate representation of the kind of performance you can expect, which is to say, it's not that smooth. I was, of course, happy to see that the reflective mirrors return from the original game, which is very cool indeed, as do the cloth physics. Really though, I think it's safe to say at this point that we have a fairly good idea of how Luigi's Mansion stacks up on 3DS versus the GameCube. So, basically, there are a lot of changes overall. This isn't just a normal port. It seems like an entirely new engine crafted specifically for 3DS, though of course, I could always be wrong, but still, lighting and shadows are handled completely differently. Geometry is slightly reduced in most areas, but increased in others. Performance isn't quite where I'd like it to be, but generally pretty stable, and there are additional loading times. But at the same time, it almost kind of feels like a full-on remake in some ways. All the textures in the game are completely new. The art direction and tone differ greatly from the original game, and everything has been basically remodeled. It feels like a fresh new take on Luigi's Mansion. I do think it's clear that 3DS and GameCube each have their own unique advantages then. Visual features that relied heavily on GameCube's unique hardware setup, for instance, needed to be stripped out and modified to work on 3DS in a different way, and it works. Compared to the various Wii to 3DS ports that we've tested, I feel like Luigi's Mansion is more impressive than all of them. Grezzo has simply done a tremendous job here in adapting the game to Nintendo's aging portable system, and in the end has produced one of the nicest looking 3DS games we've ever played. Of course, I should also probably mention the controls. This was a dual-stick game on GameCube originally. Well, at least somewhat. But if you're playing on a new 3DS, you still get that same effect. You use the nub just like the right stick on GameCube. But this time, it can at least be inverted, which is nice. 
The game also supports the gyro feature to aim your vacuum or flashlight up and down, and this works across all versions of the 3DS. The point is, controls are not an issue here. The game does play very well on Nintendo's portable system. Which means if you haven't played Luigi's Mansion, or it's been a while since you've touched it, this is a fantastic way to jump in. It's a strange little conversion that almost feels like a side make rather than a port. A game which makes changes to fit the hardware that it's on, which often wind up looking better than the original game, even if they fall short technically. But that's gonna do it for this video. If you enjoyed it, be sure to like, subscribe, ring the notification bell, and of course, follow us over on Twitter. And until next time, keep on ghost hunting.